Okay, so um, we're going to talk about uh, Berger's equation. Um, and if you, uh, this is also building off the uh, last video I recorded. So uh, we're going to use some of the same notation that we used in that video. So if you haven't seen the last video, uh, go check it out. Um, but some of this should be maybe familiar if you're if you already know the topic. Um, so Berger's equation is a specific um, type of conservation law. Okay, so we're just going to write out um, the uh, the general form for a conservation law. Okay, so what do we have? So the general form for the conservation law is the time derivative of u plus f of u. This is the flux function of our solution u. And then we take the derivative with respect to x. Okay, so this is zero. So this is the general form of a conservation law. And note we are considering a 1D, so one spatial dimension, uh, scalar conservation law. Okay, so u is just a scalar function. It takes in time and x and gives us a real number. Okay, so this is the general form of a conservation law. And based off the previous video, we talked about the transport equation. So uh, the transport equation, our flux function, is actually a times u. Okay, so the flux function is linear. Um, but for Berger's equation, Berger's equation has a nonlinear flux. Okay, so the Berger's equation is one half u squared. Okay, so let's see. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to solve the Berger's equation. Okay, for uh, a specific example, so you can see how how this works, okay? So um, the PDE, okay, so we want to solve, let's write it out. Want to solve um, a PDE, okay? So we have the time derivative of u plus one half u squared and the derivative with respect to x, this should equal to zero. And if we're solving a PDE, we need some initial condition, okay? So our initial condition, u of x comma zero, so when t is equal to zero, we're gonna say that this is g of x, this is our initial data, and we're just gonna do a specific example, um, and we're gonna take the function, it's gonna be one, when x is less than negative one, okay? It's gonna be minus x when x is between negative one and zero, and it's gonna be zero when x is greater than zero, okay? And let's just draw a little picture here. So our initial function, so this is uh, x, and this will be g of x. Our function is going to look something like this. So it's going to be 1, it's just going to be linear here, and then 0 onwards, okay? So this is negative 1, and this is 0, okay? And the uh, y value here is 1. Okay, so this is our initial profile. Okay, and what we're going to do in order to solve this PDE, we're going to follow uh, very similarly to what we did in uh, the transport equation. So, again, you know, check out that video if because we're going to be using the same concept. Okay, but first, what we're going to do is we're going to start by assume, we're going to assume our solution u of xt is smooth okay 
Now, we started, you prob probably already noticed that we've started with an initial function, which is certainly not smooth. It is not differentiable at negative one, and it's not differentiable at zero. Okay, um, I'm not going to get into all the details about uh, the differentiability, um, but basically what we can say is that g of x is smooth enough. Um, it's not differentiable at two points, which is fine. Um, and really we could do, we could do an example with a smooth function, but just for simplicity, I've just chosen this piecewise linear function because it'll make the computations a little bit easier. Um, but it doesn't, it, it's not going to matter, um, that this function is not differentiable at negative one and zero. Okay. So we're just going to kind of pretend that, um, u is, is smooth. Okay. And if u is smooth, then we can rewrite our differential equation, okay, or our PDE. So notice that ut plus one half u squared derivative with respect to x. This is equal to ut plus u times ux, okay, the derivative of u with respect to x, which is zero. Okay, um, and you can see we're invoking the differentiability of u, the fact that u is smooth by taking the derivative of u itself. Okay, um, but this is fine. Okay, and if you remember the transport equation, uh, instead of u, we had a. Um, and we're going to do the same thing. So we're not we're going to solve the problem not on the whole space time domain, but just on a line. OK, so we're, what we're going to do, we're going to parametrize. So we're going to let x be a function of time. OK, this is going to give us a, some curve in the uh, space time domain. And then we're simply just going to consider. So consider um, the following. Okay, following. So we're going to just take the total derivative of u with respect to time. And again, this is the same thing I did in the previous, uh, previous problem. Okay. So notice I wrote u is, is a function of time. And if you do the chain rule, chain rule is the partial derivative with respect to time. And then partial derivative of u with respect to x times dx dt. All right, so what do we have? Well, notice that this form here is very similar to this form here. So if we look, the only difference is the u and this dx dt, okay? Uh, so what we can say is that if dx dt is equal to u, and specifically I'm going to write out its, uh, its um, variables, okay? So if dx dt equals to u, then we have what? Then we have that d dt of u of x of t comma t, running out of space, is equal to zero. Okay, so this gives us a system of differential equations that we can solve, and we solve it the same way uh, that we did for the transport equation. Okay, so we're just going to look at the first differential equation here. This is very simple. Uh, the derivative of u is equal to zero, so that means that u of x comma t, uh, x, x of t comma t is equal to a constant. And I'm just gonna say c, okay? So it's equal to c. Okay, so well, um, how do we determine the c? Uh, if you've done some differential equations, you use your initial data. So we plug in zero for t, okay? And 
x of 0, we're going to assume that is um, x. We're going to call it x sub 0. Okay, so that's sum x, x value on the x axis. Okay, and this is comma 0. Well, this is just our initial function, g of x0. Okay, so that's what our constant is. Uh, since this has to be true for every t, um, specifically for t equals to 0, we have g of x sub 0. Okay, therefore, u of x t comma t is equal to g of x sub 0. So let's go back. We still have another differential equation to solve, this one here. All right. So if we want to solve this one, well, we, we found out what u is. u is this constant g of x sub 0. Okay. So let me just draw a line here. So dx dt is equal to g of x0. Okay. And this is a very, again, a very simple differential equation to solve. Um, this means that x of t is equal to g of x0 times t plus a constant d. Okay. And again, the constant d you can find by plugging in 0. So if you plug in 0, this goes away. So we just get d. And, well, x of 0, we said that that is x sub 0, okay? So, therefore, um, x, x of t is equal to um, g of x sub 0 t plus x sub 0. This x of t, uh, it tells us the curve in the space dimension, okay? So specifically, this is a line. Uh, so along this line in the xt plane, okay, let me just draw a quick diagram. So xt, um, just drawing it arbitrarily, say this is x0, it's just going to be some line. Okay, so a point on this line is x of t. Okay, well, specifically, this is uh, x of t comma t, right? A point on a line. Okay, so what we're saying is that on this line, we've determined, this is called the characteristic line, as I mentioned in the previous episode, characteristic line. This tells us that the value of u. So u is just constant along this line. Okay. And well, with the since this is the Berger's equation, it's it makes things a little bit more complicated. In, in the previous example, um, in the previous video, all of the characteristic lines were the same. Um, that is, they, they all had the same slope. Okay, but what we'll see is that it's going to be a little bit different um, because the value of our function is dependent on the initial data, um, of course, and the line, the slope of our line depends on the function, uh, depends on our initial data. Okay, so the way that we find the solution is we're going to have to break this up into cases. Okay, and that's kind of one of the reasons it's convenient to do this piecewise uh, definition. Okay, so let's go ahead and proceed. So we want to consider some cases. Okay, and the cases involve the, the value of x, x sub zero. Okay, so case one. What if x sub 0 is less than negative 1? Okay. Well, if x sub 0 is less than negative 1, then g 
of x sub 0 based off our piecewise definition here, this is just 1. Okay, So g of x sub 0 is 1. Hence, x of t, our character characteristic line, is t plus x sub 0. And the value of our function on this line is just 1. OK? So that's a fairly simple case. So case 2. Okay. Now we're going to assume that x sub 0 is between uh, negative 1 and 0. Then what? Uh, again, just based off the definition of our function, how we define it, this is negative x0. And so wherever there was g of x before, we just plug that in. So we have g of x sub 0, uh, sorry, not that. We have x of t is equal to minus x sub 0 t plus x sub 0. And u of x t is equal to what? Um, just g of x 0, which is minus x 0. OK, so. This doesn't quite tell us specifically what's going on in terms of time, how time is changing. Um, so we're going to rewrite this in another form. You can factor out x sub 0 and solve for x sub 0. And you'll find that this is x of t divided by 1 minus t. Okay. And since we found x sub 0 in this form, we can write this as x of t, uh, sorry, minus x of t over 1 minus t. OK, so that is the value of our function u. OK, so we, uh, we eliminated that parameter x sub 0. OK, so that's case 2. And lastly, we have case 3. And this is a short case. So case 3, we assume x sub 0 is greater than 0. And our function g of x 0 is 0. OK. So x of t is just equal to x sub 0. And our solution, u of x t, is equal to uh, 0. OK. So these are our three cases. You can see the function is 1 uh, along this line. And then the function is kind of this weird, weird value. And then for x 0 greater than 0, um, u is 0. So let's, uh, we considered all the cases. So let's write down our solution. ux of t, comma t. All right, so if you look back at the previous uh, slides, um, we're just going to recount what we did. So the value is 1 if x sub 0 is less than minus 1. It is minus x of t over 1 minus t if uh, x is between, x sub 0 is between negative 1 and 0. And it's 0 if x, I don't need if, uh, if x sub 0 is greater than 0. Okay. Um, and again, we, we don't want this parameter x sub 0 since it's, you know, it's arbitrarily chosen. Um, so we determined what x sub 0 is from the previous uh, work. So if we look here in case 1, we can solve for x sub 0 to 
eliminate that parameter. Um, and here, again, we solve for x sub 0. And also in this one, x sub 0 just equals x. Okay, so um, what we're going to do, we just write that in u of xt is equal to one uh, when x minus t is less than negative one. This is minus x of t over one minus t um, minus one less than equal to x over one minus t and this is less than equal to zero and lastly zero if um, x is greater than zero. Okay so I'm just going to rewrite this equation one more time. We can write this as uxt. The last time I'm going to rewrite this this is one um, when x is less than t minus 1, we have minus x over 1 minus t for t minus 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 0. And what? Uh, 0. Uh, again, when x is greater than 0, okay? Um, there's a few things to note here. Um, notice we divide, we multiplied by this 1 minus t, and I didn't flip the signs. We're just going to assume for now that uh, t is less than 1, okay? And we'll see why there's an issue uh, past this value in just a moment, okay? And then next is that we can drop the, the parameter t for the function because we've eliminated this parameter x sub 0, so we can consider any x value on the x-axis. Okay, so this is our solution to the problem. Okay, now granted this is only a solution, as I said, when t is less than 1. Okay, and you can notice um, right here when t gets to 1, you divide by 0. So something funny kind of happens here. Okay, and let's, let's see just graphically what this function looks like. Okay, so if we're going to plot u of x t uh, with respect to x, um, Remember g of x, this was our initial data, it looked something like this. But now uh, what happens is if, if you look at this, you think about it for a little bit, um, your function as time moves on, it, it moves to the right. Okay, So you'll get to maybe here at some value t. Okay. So this function keeps moving to the right, and eventually what's going to happen is your function will go to the right, and it's going to create this discontinuity. Okay. So here we have a discontinuity. Discontinuity at t equals 2, and this is going to be at 1. Okay. So this is an issue because, well, how do you solve this problem? You, you don't even have a continuous function anymore, okay? And uh, just for further, um, to see what else is going on, it's very useful to plot the characteristic lines in the xt plane, okay? So let's see, we can get another idea for what's going on by looking in that xt plane. Okay, so let's just draw it out here. So this is x, and this is t. Let's look at our case. 
So this, when x0 is less than negative 1, we have a line uh, with slope 1. Okay. So let's see. So negative 1, this is 0. Okay. So less than negative 1, we're going to have a line. Just We're just going to have these characteristic lines that have slope 1. Okay. Now for looking back, case 3, when x0 is greater than 0, our line is just a vertical line. Okay, this, this does not have, it has an undefined slope. Okay, so greater than zero, we're just going to have these vertical lines for our characteristics. Okay, and at, uh, in case one, it's a bit more complicated, but our characteristic lines, their slope is changing. Okay. Um, and specifically, the slope is blowing up to infinity as t approaches to 1. Okay, so looking back, what's going to happen is in between negative 1 and 0, our lines are going to kind of get more steep, and they're going to converge. They're all going to intersect this one point here. Okay, so this is t equals to 1, and this is often called the break time. Okay, this is the break time. Since our function is constant on each of these lines, we're not saying that it's the same constant value. The, the function can have different values on each line. So when they all collide at one point, our function suddenly becomes multi-valued, okay? Which is what we see with this plot in the blue, okay? Our function ha has all these different values colliding at the same point uh, at x equals zero, okay? So that's the problem. Okay, so this, this problem is not finished. We don't know, we need to figure out what happens after t is uh, greater than 1. What happens when t goes past 1? Um, and that involves uh, some other more technical theory. Okay, so as long as your function is smooth, you can do the method of characteristics. You can, you can work through it as long as you don't reach this break time. So next time, we're going to discuss something called the Riemann problem. Um, and this problem, it'll help us with uh, solving, it'll, solving, this pro solving the Riemann problem will help us to understand what's going to happen after this break time. Okay, so we'll look at the Riemann problem next. Um, it's very important, very important problem in conservation laws uh, and PDEs in general. Okay. Um, and uh, see you guys next time.